The lapidus procedure is one of the most durable and powerful techniques in the foot and ankle surgeon's armamentarium to correct a hallux valgus deformity. Its indications include moderate to severe bunion deformity, first tarsal metatarsal hypermobility and arthritis, and recurrent deformity after surgery. Despite its power and versatility, however, the lapidus procedure has some perceived drawbacks. In many cases, a prolonged period of non-weight bearing may be advised in order to affect fusion in the face of less robust fixation. The larger exposure and increased bony work may be associated with prolonged swelling and an increased incidence of wound complications. The need to create a fusion across otherwise unconstrained joint surfaces may lead to an uncomfortably high incidence of non-union. The addition of more hardware may lower the non-union rate, but this also comes with a price. Prominent hardware may lead to discomfort related to shoe wear and irritation of or even injury to the adjacent insertion of the tibialis anterior tendon. The Arthrex plantar lapidus plate directly addresses surgeons' concerns regarding the lapidus procedure and its attendant complications. A medial incision improves cosmesis, limited dorsal dissection, minimizes wound complications and postoperative swelling, plantar placement optimizes mechanics, and the anatomic profile preserves the tibialis anterior tendon insertion. This has been shown anatomically. A recent study by Plas et al. and Foot and Ankle International demonstrated that the unique U-shape of the Arthrex plantar lapidus plate respects the safe zone for plate placement between the tibialis anterior and peroneus longus tendon insertions. The plate is initially fixed distally. Application of the integrated interfragmentary screw results in axial compression across the tarsal metatarsal joint, enhancing the local environment for healing, as well as increasing construct strength and stability. The end result is a true tension band construct. The ground reaction force results in compression of the dorsal aspect of the joint, but it also results in a disadvantageous distractive force at the plantar aspect of the joint. The Arthrex plantar lapidus plate transforms this distractive force into a compressive force, further enhancing construct strength and local biology for bone healing. This 47-year-old female has a progressively painful hallux valgus deformity and a symptomatic second metatarsal phalangeal plantar plate rupture. She's failed conservative treatment including accommodative shoes, second toe taping, and corticosteroid injection. Postoperative x-rays reveal satisfactory correction of alignment, and clinically, she displays outstanding deformity correction. Despite early weight bearing, she already has excellent wound resolution and very little swelling at four weeks. This can, in large part, be attributed to the extremely rigid fixation afforded by the plate. In addition, plantar placement obviates the need for excessive dorsal exposure and soft tissue dissection. This 52-year-old gentleman experienced a progressively painful bunion deformity as well as dorsal midfoot pain. He too failed a long course of conservative treatment. X-rays show first ray hypermobility as well as lesser tarsal metatarsal arthrosis. CT scan confirms second and third tarsal metatarsal arthrosis. He underwent lapidus bunion repair and concomitant second and third tarsal metatarsal fusion with excellent clinical and radiographic correction. Six weeks post-op, he was back into a comfort shoe with surprisingly good function given the extent of his recent surgery. Postoperatively, I placed patients into a short leg weight bearing cast for two weeks to protect the soft tissues. At two weeks, they are placed into a cam walker and encouraged to perform range of motion and strengthening exercises. The importance of swelling control with a compressive dressing or stocking is emphasized. At six weeks, they may progress to a comfort shoe. About 30 to 40% of patients may benefit from formal physical therapy at this point. At 12 weeks, they're allowed to participate in activity as tolerated. From a practical perspective, patients can expect to return to unrestricted activity and shoe wear by four to six months. Thank you very much.